So we must do two things, two great things together to encompass that enormous new view that lies before us, but to encompass it within the framework of science, to see it within the whole categorical framework of science, and to see that these two are not separate, but that they are wedded. The bigness of the idea, the newness of the idea, the greatness of it is one with the structure of science, the structure of being itself. Now we need to go further in our text and you see that there is not just one scriptural note in that uh, chapter but there is a second scriptural note and this in its tonality also pervades the whole text of the chapter. What is that second scriptural note? What does it say our need is? The whole chapter is telling us that our need is what? That, to, that your father knoweth, first your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. So the first scriptural note cannot stand alone, but it is in a context. It must be seen in the context of the second scriptural note. And that scriptural note that says that your father knoweth is really saying that the self-organizing principle, love, knows what you need, knows the goal. The need is the goal. And so there is a depicting of the operation of the self-organizing principle, the cybernetic principle, depicting what lies behind those two feedback circuits of the positive and the negative feedback. When we have the two values of absolute Christian science and Christian science coming together, that gives us the, um, the categories that form the first scriptural note. But when we look at the second scriptural note, we see that the second scriptural note is formed by the categories of divine science, such that the first scriptural note is nested in the second that the second scriptural note governs the first, is the attractor for the first. Without the second, the first is just ordinary metaphysics. And you can hear that. And if you take it out of the context and you read it, you can hear that. Ellen, can you? The first. The first. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So you can, can hear that. Whosoever shall say, isn't this, the world is filled with this. Anybody can say anything and they can have it. That, that's what that first scriptural note sounds like until it is brought within the restraints of the second scriptural note. It sounds like you can ask for anything you want, whatever it is you want to get rid of, whatever it is you want to bring into your experience, Je doesn't it sound like that? Just say, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Yeah, and just believe it. Believe it with all your heart and soul and mind, whatever that means. And we need the prayer chapter to show us the scientific context of that.
what that means. And so uh, she begins the chapter by telling us something we want to hear. <laughs> we want to hear that, that yes, some, something that is offensive can be removed, something that we want, something that we need can be realized and uh, that we only need to believe, but then she has to explain what does the Bible mean, what does Jesus mean by believing, what does it mean to believe. Actually, it means to understand what's involved in understanding, and we need the whole development of the chapter to establish that, the whole chapter. And so she gives us something we want to hear, isn't that what you do with a, a reader if you're trying to draw them in? That's what love does. Actually, it isn't a person. It wasn't Mrs. Eddy. It's the way love formed the subject in its presentation. To say, how can I attract you? How can I attract everyone to myself? Well, I'll tell them. I'll show them. I'll tell them, yes, they can have what they desire. You can have whatever you desire after I reform that desire. Yeah. And so that second uh, scriptural note comes in and says that the human mind must give way to the divine mind. You're human sense of struggling and striving must give way to the divine qualities within you, the spiritual struggling, spiritually striving, that your humanly set goals must give way to the divine goal, to the goal of soul. And so mind, spirit, and soul have to come in and reform us, and they reform us according to the pattern of the self-organizing principle, that it is actually your father behind everything. Your father knows. So in a way, uh, we could reverse those two scriptural notes just for the sake of, of uh, understanding them. And we would see that the second scriptural note gives us that touch of the self-organizing principle of divine science and that then the first scriptural note is molded with by that nested within that formed and shaped by the divine self-organizing principle such as to be able to express the positive feedback and the negative feedback circuits working together in perfect accord to bring out the true desire and the true prayer. So the second gives us the divine authority for the first scriptural note. And together, the two scriptural notes express the, the, the whole cybernetic flow of being. So the Father knoweth the Father, meaning the divine cybernetic principle, love, which is life, life in divine science, knows what you need, knows what we need. What does the divine principle, love, which is life, know? It doesn't know a person. It doesn't know anything that is not it itself, itself, yeah. The Father knows himself. The Father knows the Father. The Father knows the nature of the Father. The divine cybernetic principle can only know its own nature. It knows I am mind, I am spirit, I am soul, I am principle, I am life, I am truth, I am love. I'm the calculus, I'm the four. I am multidimensional. I'm, I fill the universe. Governing myself, I govern the universe. And so it knows its own 
nature, its own operation, its own translatability and multidimensionality, its own infinite system. And what the Father knows is what we need. Your Father knoweth what you need. So what the Divine Principle knows about itself is what you need. You need the Father, <laughs> the Divine Cybernetic Principle, and you need to know what the Divine Cybernetic Principle knows. The sevenfold nature, the fourfold operation, the infinite translatability of that principle. So our need is to know God. This is what it means to know God as he is. To know this principle. To know always more and more and more of this principle. This love principle. That is the only true desire. The only right desire. And love knows our need, love knows that, and has already supplied it. Somewhere in the text she says that, your father knoweth your need and it's already supplied. So we get a relationship of divine cybernetic impact between the second scriptural note and the first scriptural note telling us that the divine principle knows our need and that the need has been supplied. You have what you need. <laughs> you already have what you need. It's already supplied. And so believe that ye receive them, whatsoever ye desire. Believe that ye receive it. And the later versions, the later translations of that text say, believe that you already have received it. And thus the, the real rendering is, understand that you already have it. Whatever it is you desire, understand that you already have it, and you will have it. <laughs> it's a consciousness, isn't it? It's a question of consciousness, of being conscious of the divine, and the only need is the divine, and thus a consciousness of the divine is the answer to that need. So what do we have at every scale the scale, really, of every individual consciousness is the pattern. Remember we were talking about the, we talked about the seed within itself. At the early part of the Bible, uh, this is called the seed within itself. In the prophets, they called it the remnant. In the New Testament, they called it the leaven, or the kingdom of heaven, that the kingdom of heaven is like a leaven that the kingdom of heaven is already within you, that the remnant is within you, that the seed is within itself. This is what is meant by understand that you have it already. Because that which you have already is divinely cybernetic. It's the pattern of the divine cybernetic principle. And so it is cybernetic. It is the Christ idea within you and thus it bears fruit after its own kind. It isn't static. It isn't stagnant. It is autocatalytic. It is autocatalytic. That the kingdom of heaven is like unto a leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. That leaven which is, is embedded in, nested in consciousness, 
in the uh, uh, three essential aspects of consciousness that that leaven is there and it's overturning consciousness it is catalyzing consciousness so you have the pattern within you and it is autocatalytic self producing by reflection it produces itself by reflection by self reflection being produces more and more and more of itself you see that um, for in order for a catalyst to work do you remember at the beginning of this week we said in order for a catalyst to work you have to have what you want to get <laughs> it's paradoxical it is impossible to get something unless you already have it you you feel how consciousness just relaxes uh, just is relieved is comforted in the sense of, of love the love sense that oh it's it's already here it's already fulfilled I already have what I need so you cannot pray for something and you cannot receive something that you pray for unless you already have it so the text is saying desire to get what you have <laughs> and give what you do have because you already have something give what you have to God give what you have to God and your need is met so prayer is to give to God what you have and then you will get it full and running over it comes back again the whole process is cybernetic you what you have is the divine nature give that back to the divine and it comes back again as more more of the divine you give it back again how do you give it back by focusing on it by loving it by adoring it by acknowledging it within you by pondering what you have that's why pondering is a spiritual method that gives birth so you have it and you give it back and it comes back again you hear it's a cybernetic cycle and anything less than that is just ordinary metaphysics just metaphysics what you have is what you get yes do you remember that yeah. class uh-huh yeah and the Bible is filled with that teaching Jesus uh, gave that as a fundamental teaching and they today they see it as the so uh, the textbook does not present us with a system or a science that meets all our human desires hmm? all our human desires or that will enable us to have what we don't yet have but it leads us always to the one need the one question what is God what is God and in the 14th chapter where there is a recapitulating of the whole text the whole textbook that very first point of intersection begins with the question what is God yeah the seven and the four and the four are autocatalytic as we've indicated therefore divinely cybernetic 
They are an autocatalytic set, which means that they, within consciousness, within a consciousness that is evolving, that is being leavened, that is being changed from one substance to another, they catalyze each other. The seven and the four and the four, it's like you don't have just one thing in consciousness and it's auto-catalyzing itself. But if you have 15 fundamental root notions, as we do, as that's the pattern within us, this is a set. And the whole set works on itself, autocatalytically. Could there be anything more dynamic than that? No, the answer is no. So to sum up then the whole lesson of the first and the second scriptural notes is to take the standpoint of divine principle, of divine science, of love. It's, a, it's an attitude of thy will be done, isn't it? Yeah. Thy will be done. So that the will that we then see in the in the first scriptural note, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever shall desire to have that mountain removed, the will behind that desire must be the divine will. It must be thy will be done. So to go out from thy will be done is to go out from the nature of that infinite one, the operation of that infinite one, allow that nature and operation to, to bring forth, to translate itself to every level of our experience. This in contrast with going out from a problem. You see, versus going out from a problem to an idea. I have a problem. Let me look at this problem and scrutinize it and turn it around in all of its facets until I figure out what caused that problem. And having found out what caused it, I can go back to the idea that is the truth behind that which I think caused the problem. This is not science. This is not science. Did you hear that? Yeah. It is not science. Okay.